Friends, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. for you to read on your own. Um, we have quite a full service today. So yes, please take your bulletin home and uh, read all the upcoming uh, events, especially this weekend, which is Pride Sunday. So I invite you to, um, to look up the weekend events. There's a movie night on Friday night at Glen Burnie and then our Pride service on Sunday morning where um, six of our church family are going to speak about a bit of their story and um and we're going to create a safe place for them to share uh, their story on pride sunday i'm going to invite i wondered if uh, i could have a volunteer to light the candle somebody in the back corner any volunteers Can you rock, paper, scissors, maybe, a couple of you? <laughs> Rosie, would you like? No, that's okay. Clara, Lauren, can you rock, paper, scissors? Who's going to come and be my helper? I'm getting total blank stares. Okay. We light this candle as a sign of God's spirit at work in the world. May its light brighten our spirits. May the light of God shining through us brighten the world. As we come to this service, when we reflect on good things that the church has done in the past and some mistakes, some, some big mistakes, and also trying to uh, make promises to do better um, as a church and as a, as a community, let's do the acknowledgement of territory. Since time immemorial, First Peoples' lives and spirituality have been deeply connected to this land. We acknowledge the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples whose territory we are on. We believe that our relationships with the Creator, the land, the people, the plants, and the animals are sacred. Let us honor these sacred relationships as we gather together to worship God. This service is one we share with churches across our denomination this month. We are one in the spirit. Let us now join together in our call to worship, setting our intentions as we enter this centennial year. 
From deep soil comes bold and daring growth. From the seeds of our past will come fresh new growth. We come today to marvel at what has been harvested and prepare for what will come. We come to celebrate where we are and where we have been. We come rejoicing with our ancestors in faith across generations. The Methodists, Congregationalists, and the Presbyterians. The Evangelical United Brethren and local United Churches and our co-communion partners across this world. The Presbyterian Church in the Republic of Korea. The United Church of Christ in the United States. The United Church of Christ in the Philippines. And the Disciples of Christ. We give thanks to God for the blessings of past, present, and future, and dare to plant these seeds of faith anew. Our hymn is not 595. Look on the, um, the, in front of you on the board. It's 820, Make a Joyful Noise, which is a paraphrase of Psalm 100. And a, an interesting note, um, our spiritual ancestors sang another paraphrase of this uh, psalm, Psalm 100, 99 years ago at the uh, Union service in 1925. So let's raise our voices and sing 820, make a joyful noise. And let's uh, do verses one and three. Let us pray. Again and again, God, we come to this place and time with a song. Each day you give us a chance to begin anew, to drink deeply of your spirit, to boldly follow in the way of Jesus, and to dare to seek justice as we seek relationship with our neighbors and you. Again and again, God, you call us out of our old lives and into your new day. And so, as we celebrate the 99th anniversary of this United Church of yours, help us to reflect back with clarity upon all that deserves to be celebrated, all that deserves to be lamented, and all that deserves to be let go. We're not perfect, God, but we are yours and we trust that you are with us every day. This day and always help us to be good grain that's planted and tended by your love so that in the year to come we may flourish in this time and place. Amen. So I wanna tell everybody a story. 
In 1925, something amazing happened. People who believed in God, but in different ways, came together and started the United Church of Canada. There was excitement and passion about what would come, grief over what had been lost, and even worry and fear because a united church like ours never existed before. We were growing something new and hoping to see seed God's love into the world. For almost a hundred years, the church has been planting. And on anniversaries, we like to celebrate the harvest of our actions. So here are some things that we are celebrating during this anniversary year. The United Church has built resources on Love is Louder, it's called, advocacy for the LGBTQ community, ministry with children and youth, arts, architecture, and the church, the indigenous church, food, security, justice, and sustainability, justice and advocacy, ecumenical and interfaith partnerships, emergency relief and disaster response, becoming an anti-racist church and celebrating the ministry of women. Wow. Also climate justice. Now, can you think of things that you would like to celebrate about Inverary United Church and Storrington Pastoral Charge? How do we celebrate God's presence, live in respect with creation, love and serve others, seek justice and resist evil, and proclaim Jesus in our community and the world. So just throw out things that you are thankful for, things you want to celebrate about our church. Food bank. Food bank, yes. Openness. Sue? Openness. Openness. Sense of community. Community. Yeah. school. Yes. And play the organ. And play the organ for 32 years. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, all men. Bev. Church family. Mm hmm. Church family. A great minister. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Dad. And a great musician. Benevolent mission service reaching out beyond our walls. Awesome. Anniversaries are opportunities to remember what also what we want to change going forward, as well as celebrating what has gone well. We admit that there were times, and in the National Church admits that there are things that people have done in God's name that have been hurtful and harmful to others. And we admit that there are times when we don't do things that God would have us do. The life of the church is full of both good things that we experience and do, and also the ways that we miss the mark. There's times when we foster beautiful flowers, and there's other times we've neglected to tend our lives towards God's love. And in the church, we bring the things that we don't live up to in God's loving standards, before God in prayer, and we call that the prayer of confession. And it's one way of apologizing for what we've done and ask God to help us fix the relationships that have been hurt. We also ask God to help us do better moving forward. So today, we're going to begin the work of making room for life to grow. And we're going to uh, remove some rocks. That's going to happen near the end of the prayers of confession. At the beginning of the prayers of confession, you can leave your eyes open for this prayer. Because I'm going to point to you when you need to respond with these words. Let us make room for love. Let's try. Let us make room for love. Perfect. At the end of the uh, prayers of the Peter prayers of confession, if you're willing to read a couple of words on a rock, just put your hand up, I'll need five volunteers, 
at near the end of the service. So I'll be asking for volunteers to take a rock and to tell me what words are on your stone. But first, let's pray. Loving God, in the fields of our lives, in the life of our church, not all the ground is ready to receive your seeds of hope. There are places where the soil is so rocky that the good life you intended is choked. As we prepare for your new seeds, help us to clear the rocks and tend the ground on which we live. And now receive our silent prayers as we confess our words, our actions, and our attitudes. Who began a good work in 
us and will continue it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. At this time, let's stand and sing 288, verses 1 and 3. And during the third verse, if Rosie and her mom would like to come forward, they're welcome for a little presentation. But if you're more comfortable staying back there, I can come to you. You guys can talk about it during the verses, whether you want to come up front or I can come to you for a little, little surprise for Rosie. Let's sing.
that's okay. <laughs> Thank that's you. all right. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So proud. And Lois told me that her daughter Abby is graduating from Queens in life sciences. So there's a blank. Your granddaughter, sorry. Sorry, granddaughter Abby. There's a cross and a blanket for Abby. Oh, congratulations. to the Holy One, you who love God, for this is what you were created to do. Praise the Holy One with voice and song, with stringed instruments that our songs ring out loud and clear. For God's words are trustworthy and true. The Holy One is always faithful. She loves justice and righteousness. It spoke and the heavens were made. Galaxies, nebulas were the breath of their mouth. They gathered the seas as into a jar and the depths were gathered as grain in a storehouse. May all creation revere God through our living and all people honor her with their hearts, minds, and deeds. For Creator spoke, and the world came to be. You called forth, and creation blossomed. The nations may plan, but you laugh. Your plans are what lasts forever. The purposes of your heart are planted within each generation. Blessed are those who follow the ways of God, the children who share life as your chosen family. For you, O oh God, are our hope, help, and home. 
In your love, our hearts rejoice, and in your future we place our trust. May your blessing rest upon us, O God, even as we hope in you. This morning's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 28. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. For the wisdom of these words. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. And inch by inch, row by row, God bless these seeds I sow. Please warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones We are made of dreams and bones Feel the need to grow my own Cause the time is close at hand Grain for grain, sun and rain Find my way in nature's chain Tune my body and my brain To the music from the land Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. And inch by inch, row by row, God bless these seeds I sow. Please warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Plant your rows straight and long, temper them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Old crow watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. In my garden I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. Inch by inch, row by row, 
gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. An inch by inch, row by row, God bless these seeds I sow. Please warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Let us pray. Holy One, we believe you speak to us through the songs of birds and the wind in the trees, through the wisdom of living elders and our spiritual ancestors and faith. As we reflect on the scripture today, God, may we receive what your spirit is saying to the church. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage in the Bible reminds me of a book that I read a lot as a child called Amanda Grows Up. And so kids at the back, if you want to listen, this is, a, this is like a little children's story. It's good for all ages. It's a story of a hazelnut named Amanda. Amanda lives on the end of a hazelnut tree branch with her friends Phil, Bert and Carolyn. Carolyn. They were very happy in their tree, watching the children play in the park, swinging in the breeze, and watching the birds in the branches. When autumn comes, the other hazelnuts fall to the ground, and they invite Amanda to join them. But she's afraid because she likes where she is, and the ground looks very far away. Then she sees the children come and pick up the other hazelnuts and carry them off to their school. Amanda thinks this is mighty fun, so she bravely drops to the ground, but she sinks into the grass where no one can find her. She doesn't get picked up and taken to school, and Amanda is very sad. Winter comes and Amanda sleeps under the fallen leaves and the snow. In spring, she feels too tight and her shell cracks open. She grows roots down into the earth and she reaches up towards the sun and Amanda grows into a big hazelnut tree. I wonder about the words from the scripture when it says, anyone who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life. I wonder what it means to let it go and still have it forever. I wonder if Amanda got her new life because she let go. Sometimes life doesn't go according to plan. And I expect we can all say that, and we can all understand how Amanda felt when she jumped to the ground, ready for an adventure, but instead got lost in the grass. Perhaps you're feeling a little bit lost in the grass right now. I've also found myself pondering the last line of the passage, if you let, sorry, if you let it go, being reckless in your love, I love that line, being reckless in your love, you'll have it forever. The idea about being reckless in love reminded me of bees. And the reason why I thought of bees was because a friend in university, she got some mason bees while we were in university to put in her garden. Some of you are familiar with mason bees, sometimes some aren't, but um, they're solitary bees. They don't build hives like other bees. They're smaller, they're sort of a bluish, greenish color, and they live on their own. 
Mason bees are gentle. They hardly sting. My friend tells me that she was able to carry them in her hand. In the spring, they hatch around the same time as the first blossoms come out on the, fir- the fruit trees. They're excellent pollinators of early flowers. And they have short lifespans. They spend most of their lives preparing a home for their eggs. Mason bees like to lay their eggs in tunnels or a small enclosed space. And they lay one egg and then they collect up a pile of pollen for that egg, then build a little wall. Then they do it again, creating little chambers for their eggs. And when spring turns to summer, mason bees die. In the meantime, the eggs hatch. They hatch in their chambers. The larvae feed on the pollen. Then they make a cocoon and hibernate until the following spring. That same year that my friend raised some mason bees in her garden, that exact same year, um, we, her and I were in the midst of our bachelor's degree in divinity. And if you ever have to test your faith, <laughs> study it academically. <laughs> and after a particularly hard year and a draining year and a particularly hard and ex- uh, exam time, her and I both felt we had a period where we were feeling lost and feeling abandoned by God. It wasn't that we didn't believe in God, but it was we didn't believe God believed in us. And we spent much of that summer unsure, I would say, uh, unsure if we'd feel God's presence again. In the fall, my classmate, the one who was having doubts and the one who was um, raising bees, gave me a box of apples from her backyard. It was one of those bumper crop years and she had more apples that she knew what to do with. So I decided to make an apple pie, my mom's recipe, of course. I remember being in the kitchen making an apple pie, peeling the apples, and I began to think about the mason bees because I realized at that moment it was the mason bees from earlier in the spring, my friend's mason bees, that pollinated the blossoms that made my apples. But mason bees don't live past the spring. They don't live to see their descendants grow up. They don't live long enough to see their hard work of pollinating, the pollinating blossoms, turn to apples. Yet they are reckless with their love collecting food for their children that they'll never know. Working in the springtime, moving creation towards seasons that they'll never experience. They leave a legacy after their short springtime life that changes blossom into food. They change the world, reckless in their love, and it's real, and it's eternal. That's where God is. That's what God is. As I stood in my kitchen that autumn afternoon, peeling apples and thinking about mason bees, the presence of God returned and my faith was renewed. I think about that story every now and then. I think about mason bees, I think about the apples, and I think about Amanda the hazelnut. When life gets tipsy-turvy, or we find it hard to keep living our lives in ways that have meaning, that's where the bees come in, and where we can find a future with hope. Because the bees do what is right and what is good, not knowing what the outcome will be. Not knowing what the future will bring. They trust as we are called to trust. 
that planting, being buried like a seed in the ground, or a bee in a cocoon, or a hazelnut in the grass will grow into something. Something we know not what, but I'm willing to put my faith on it that it'll be something good. Amanda the hazelnut had a dream, and she wanted to go on an adventure. So she recklessly jumped from her tree and landed in the grass where she sank down deep and wasn't found. And there are times that we're lost in the grass. Maybe you feel lost in the grass right now. In those times, we are called to be patient. It's not easy to stay still and quiet and alone, more or less. Like Amanda does throughout the winter, she sleeps in the ground, is buried beneath the seeds, the soil, the grass, the snow. Sometimes we're being called to a more solitary winter, like mason bees in their little cocoons. And sometimes we're asked to let go. Let go of our lives as they are. Because if we hold on to life as it, as it is, too hard, we'll destroy it. When Amanda wakes up in the springtime, she feels constricted. Her shell cracks, the roots grow. And Amanda lets go of the life that she wanted, her life as it was, and grows into something new, something amazing, a hazelnut tree. And sometimes we feel like hazelnuts lost in the grass, or grains of wheat buried in the earth, waiting. Sometimes we're planting, sometimes we're planning, and sometimes the very hard part, we're waiting waiting to see what our seeds will grow into, waiting for the springtime. So the time of letting go, letting go of what was, what should have been, and all the things that didn't happen, and we do so full of trust. Trust that spring will come, trust that seeds will sprout, bees will be born, flowers will be pollinated, and apples will grow. as we too will grow, reckless in our love and our future with hope. Reckless in our love and our future with hope. And it'll be forever, it'll be real, and it will be eternal. Thanks be to God. And let us join our voices in singing hymn 507. And we'll do verses 1, 3, and 4. Oh. 
Making an offering, giving, and being generous are a lot like planting seeds. A single seed can produce a bountiful harvest. Imagine how big an impact we can have when together we plant generously with our gifts to this community of faith and through the Benevolent and through Mission and Service Fund. As followers of Jesus, I invite you to give. And let us pray um, the blessing of uh, dedication of offering of the gifts that are at the back of the church on our plate and gifts we might have received online. Let us pray. Gracious God, we believe that you are calling us forward into a new day. We believe that you have a future for Storrington Pastoral Charge and the United Church of Canada that is rooted in your abundant life. And we trust you with this future, even though it's beyond the horizon of our dreams. So we offer you the blessings you have already given us, our time, our talents, our finances, and our hopes so that you might use them and transform them for the good of your whole world. May these gifts be a blessing to the people of Battersea, Inverary, and beyond. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God of the present, the past, the future. From this moment, we are on the threshold. The church is almost, but not yet, a hundred years old. As we remember backward to dream forward, help us to go forth to prune, gathering in all that's good and lovely, repairing the damage we find, Lamenting that which has died and is dying. Guide us through this year so that in one year we will witness how the seeds of today have blossomed. Let this year be a time of preparation so that what you will grow in the next 100 years can take root. All of this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to sing together the Lord's Prayer. Sent out in Jesus' name, more voices, number 212, 212 in more voices hymn book. Yeah. 
blessing is both gift and call. Blessed are you who give your life to living deeply within the Spirit's call, who long to be planted fully within the heart of Christ and to love God's world with all your heart. Blessed are you who give your life to bold discipleship, who plant the Savior's seeds of love, faith, hope, and joy, and trust that God will nurture those seeds. And blessed are you who give your life to daring justly for all creation, you whose heart breaks open like a seed in the earth, as you give your life for the flourishing of all places and people. And blessed are we who live this life and give this life, for we are not 